What's up, y'all? This is Jamoke, and today I'm going to be talking about everybody's favorite subject, race. Now, first of all, let me be clear about one thing. We do not live in a post-racial society. If we are to progress in this society and make any meaningful change to the world as we know it, we must not believe the lies that we have told ourselves so we can sleep better at night. We can't afford to believe that racism has ended simply because there are no longer signs that say whites only near water fountains or bathrooms. We can't say that racism is over simply because we do not see children in the streets getting brutalized by high-pressured water shooting out of fire hoses for protesting the Jim Crow system. The image has changed, but not the reality. The reality of the situation is this, and it's always been this. We live in a white supremacist society. And I love when people talk about Obama as if he's changed race relations for black people. You know, oh, we have a black president. How could we have racism? Barack Obama doesn't change this. I can't emphasize this point enough. Barack Obama being president does not destroy the system of racism that has poisoned our country since its birth. How could it? You know, if we really think about this, how does that argument even make any rational sense? I'll give you a different example. Benazir Bhutto was the Prime Minister of Pakistan in the late 80s. Now, if someone's seriously going to make the argument that there's gender equality in Pakistan because they had a female head of state, no, of course not. Did sexism end the moment he stepped into office? No, of course it didn't, because systematic issues do not end overnight. The election of Barack Obama is not an example of black Americans overcoming racism and moving into a new era of race relations. And it's an example of the American people being smart enough not to elect John McCain or Mitt Romney. You could even argue that it's not progress for black people at all. In a recent interview that he had, Chris Rock made a, made a really interesting point about that. He said, quote, White people were crazy. Now they're not as crazy. To say that black people have made progress would be to say that they deserve everything that happened to them before. So, to say Obama's progress is saying that he's the first black person that is qualified to be president. That's not black progress. That's white progress. There's been black people qualified to be president for hundreds of years. If you saw Tina and Ike having a lovely breakfast over there, would you go say their relationships improved? Some people would. But a smart person would go, oh, he stopped punching her in the face. End quote. I think he hit it on the nail, you know? The election of Obama showed progress on the behalf of white America because it showed that they'd reached a point, at least in theory, where they were comfortable with having a black slash biracial man. I don't really know how Barack Obama identifies, so I don't want to label him. But, you know, comfortable with having a black or biracial man represent themselves and, and their country on an international level. Yet and still, that does not mean that we have entered a post-racial society. I think that many people who believe that mean well. I really do. You know, you have a lot of people walking around saying, oh, quote, I don't see race, I don't see color, I only see human, I only see who a person is on the inside. And I suppose in theory that's fine. But in reality, and in this country, that kind of mindset is extremely dangerous. Because if you don't see race, not only are you blind to one of the most important components of someone's identity, that dramatically affects their lives every single day. But you're also blind to the problem as well. We have a serious problem with race in the United States, more so now than ever before. And don't take my word on it. Listen to the facts. According to a New York Times article written by journalist Nicholas Kristof, the average black household in the United States is $6,314, compared with $110,500 for the average white household, according to 2011 census data. The gap has worsened in the last decade, and the United States now has a greater wealth gap by race than South Africa did during apartheid. Whites in America, on average, own almost 18 times as much as blacks. In South Africa in 1970, excuse me, the ratio was about 15 times. Here's another one. The black-white income gap is roughly 40% greater today than it was in 1967. Here's another one. A black boy born today in the United States have a li has a life expectancy of five years shorter than that of a white boy. You know, and despite these startling statistics, 
Another 2011 study by scholars at Harvard and Tufts found that white people on average believed that anti-white racism was a bigger problem than anti-black racism. Look, y'all, the bottom line is this. Until we understand that we have a problem, we won't be able to fix it. I understand that people have difficulty leaning into discomfort and talking about these tough issues, but we have to be real because the direction we're heading in is not good. That's all I got for y'all.